can pay for the one, you can pay for the two. Eating some food and do a movie with you. The pay, the pay brothers. Oh. Start the debate. Oh, hi, folks. I'm debate brother number two. I was just reading Robert Louis Stevenson's timeless classic, Treasure Island. Now, if you want to know, Treasure Island is the story of a young boy named Jim Hawkins who goes searching for buried treasure, but in the company of his friends and also the one-legged pirate, Long John Silver. The book was such a success that even since the black-and-white silent movie era, there's been movies made from all around the country. And today we're going to be talking about one of those movie adaptations of the novel. And I have the movie right here. Treasure Island starring Kevin Zeger and Jack Palance. Now this movie totally deviates from the book, mostly. There are some accurate moments. And we'll be, I'll be explaining to you that when I tell you about the film. Now... If you don't want to watch this, there will be spoilers. So let's begin. The film starts out with F Captain John Flint burying his treasure. And of course, Billy Bones and Long John Silver get into an argument about the treasure. And Billy Bones cuts off Long John Silver's leg. Although in the novel, it was a cannonball that took off K Silver's leg. Years later, Billy Bones goes to the Admiral Bimbo Inn, where he meets young Jim Hawkins, played by Kevin Zeggers, who you best remember from Air Bud. Anyway, Jim is living with his grandmother, but in the novel, it was his mother. Mm. This movie mm. is totally, like I said, deviating from the novel. Billy Bones tells him to keep an eye out for a one-legged seafaring man, and he would give him money for it. He meets Dr. Livesey, who he takes a pretty good dislike to, and then later, Black Dog comes looking for Billy Bones, asks for the map, and is chased away. Billy Bones falls ill, and Jim meets Blind Pew, who delivers the black spot to Billy Bones, and Billy Bones dies shortly after giving the map to Jim. The pirates attack the Amal Bimbo Inn, Jim flees with his grandmother, and the and Blind Pew is killed when, when British officers arrive. Jim's grandmother dies out of all the excitement, leaving him orphaned. Dr. Livesey and Jim go meet with Squire Chaloney, and they read the map and decide to go search for Flint's treasure and make it a three-way split between them. When they reach Bristol... Jim is sent by Squire Chaloney to meet with John Silver, who's played by Jack Palance. Black Dog, however, catches Jim at Silver's Inn, the Spyglass Inn, and tries to kill him, but Jim escapes him. They finally are on voyage towards Treasure Island, but Captain Smollett takes a pretty good dislike to Jim. And then Jim... Later, hears while hiding in the apple barrel, getting himself an apple. Long John Silver, Israel Hands, and George Mary talking about how they'll steal the treasure and kill everyone else. Jim tells the squire and the others about Silver's plan. The captain decides to send Jim to spy on them. When the pirates and Jim and Silver get aboard, the, get onto the island. The pirates try to attack Jim. Jim escapes with a little help from Silver. And, the, and he runs into old Ben Gunn, who's been marooned on the island for three years and still, like always, would just love a good piece of cheese. Then Captain Smollett, the squire, and the doctor and their men escape the ship Hispaniola when Israel Hands and the pirates try to take it over. Jim overhears all the shots fired on board and uses Ben Gunn's boat to climb aboard. 
only to find Israel Hands is waiting for him on board. He chases Jim up, up the mast, but Jim does not shoot him like in the actual novel or in all other adaptations. He just makes Israel Hands fall to his death. Then Jim returns to the island. Ben Gunn takes him to Flint's old stockade where his friends are, where the captain convinces the doctor and the squire to cut Jim out of the treasure and to give Jim's share to him. Now, in the novel, they were all willing to share equal rights to the treasure. This movie shows how greedy and selfish Jim's thought-to-be friends were. Jim is angry that he's been cut out, and him and Ben Gunn get captured by Silver's men. Silver decides to use Jim to get the map. They, t they go to parley with Captain Smollett, but they do not want the boy back. And when Jim sees Silver being mistreated, he takes Silver's side and, and helps him. Later that night, Jim, Silver, and Ben Gunn are joining forces together when George Mary takes the place as captain from Silver by giving him the black spot. Silver willingly gives up his place as captain. The next morning, the squire, the doctor, and the captain have an idea. Let Silver and the pirates find it, find the treasure, and then relieve him of it. But the squire gives him the map and even tries to save Jim's life anyway, even though they won't give him a cut of the treasure. Jim refuses to go with them. Then the treasure hunt begins. Smollett, Trelawney, and Dr. Livesey follow them. They find the treasure is not there where it says it will be buried. All of a sudden they, are, they get attacked by, by the captain and the others. The pirates and all the others fight. When Dr. Livesey is killed with, the, with all the other pirates, leaving Jim, Ben Gunn, and Silver alone to fight for themselves, Ben Gunn kills the captain when he got Jim in his sights, and the squire is killed by John Silver. In the novel, only two of the squire's men were killed, and some of the pirates did live. Anyway, in this... All of them die except for Jim, Silver, and Ben Gunn. Ben Gunn leads them to his cave where he has Flint's treasure buried. Jim knows where the ship is, so all three of them split the treasure three ways. They get aboard the Hispaniola and sail off for more great adventures. Now this film came out in 1999, but nine years earlier... Fraser Heston, Charlton Heston's son, made Treasure Island himself, also the most faithful to the novel, starring his dad as Long John Silver and Christian Bale as young Jim Hawkins. This film is, is a pretty good one, pretty inaccurate to the novel, but still quite enjoyable in its own rights. There's been two versions of it, on the DVD version, which... I've got right here some things were cut out. Less some of the violence his scenes were cut from the film. But in one version, nothing was cut. That version you can find on YouTube also. Anyway, I give this film three stars out of five. It's a pretty good one. Anyway, Let me think. About the adaptations. If you always make a movie based on a novel and you always basically follow the novel, always having it uh, the way it ends, the, it could get boring. That's why I like this one. They changed it up a little bit. Because that's what they do in a lot of horror movies too. Usually the hero gets away and there's a happy ending. The monster's killed or the bad guy's arrested, anything like that. But sometimes they let the bad guys win because... They want you to hope that later they will get what's coming to them also. It could have, but my Treasure Island series could have had a great spin-off series with Jim, Ben Gunn, and Silver having more great high seas adventures. But they didn't. And so it leaves it up to the viewers' ideas what might be a new adventure on the high seas for those three friends. 
So the next, so the next review we'll be doing will be from my brother, number one, who hated this movie because it deviated so much from the book. He'll be giving you a review of his own movies that he loves too. I don't know what it'll be, but he'll let you know when he makes his review. Until then, I'm Debate Brother Number Two, signing out.